SpaceX is about to do something bold. Again. Flight 10 is not just another rocket test. It could decide whether Starship becomes the first fully reusable rocket that works like a plane, fly, land, refuel, and fly again. This time, the mission is packed with big challenges. SpaceX will try to turn on an engine in space, test the doors that release satellites, survive the intense heat of re-entry, and land safely in the ocean. They might even attempt to catch the booster with the giant arms on the launch tower, a move that has never been tried before. The main focus is to prove Starship is not only reusable, but also ready to deliver heavy satellites and other cargo into orbit again and again. So, when is Flight 10 expected to fly? Musk mentioned that it might launch in the first part of August 2025, with August 4th being a possible target. That estimate lines up with a recent public notice filed by the United States Federal Communications Commission. In the past, these filings have often matched the real launch dates, which makes this date likely to be accurate. The flight will use Booster 16 and Ship 37. These are the two main parts of the rocket. Ship 36 was supposed to fly, but it failed during fuel loading. So, Ship 37 is taking over. It already passed a big tank test in May and is now getting its engines, flaps, and heat tiles installed. SpaceX is also upgrading the launch pad with stronger clamps, faster fueling lines, and improved engine chill-down systems. These upgrades are meant to reduce the time between tests and allow the rocket to roll in and out of the pad more easily, instead of being stuck in place after each round of testing. Once the engines are installed, the team will run a static fire test. That is when the engines are turned on while the rocket stays on the ground. After that, they will inspect everything, engines, fuel tanks, payload doors, and pressure systems. These areas have caused problems in past flights, so checking them carefully is important. Let's break down what this mission is trying to do. There are four main goals. First, get Starship into space. Second, test the system for releasing satellites. Third, restart one of its engines while in space. And fourth, make it back to Earth in one piece. But the real purpose behind all of this is to show that the newest version of Starship can actually work the way SpaceX says it can. If SpaceX can show that everything works safely, and as planned, the FAA is more likely to approve more launches in the future. That's critical if SpaceX wants to turn Starship into a regularly flying vehicle for delivering satellites, cargo, and eventually people. One of the most critical parts of this flight is testing the payload bay door. On Flight 9, the door did not open as expected. Flight 10 will carry 10 fake Starlink satellites to check if the doors now work correctly. These fake satellites have the same size and weight as the real ones, but will not stay in space. Instead, they will fall back to Earth and land in the Indian Ocean. These tests are very important because the next version of Starlink satellites, called Version 3, is much larger and heavier than before. These new satellites will give faster internet service. Each one can download up to 1 terabit per second and upload 160 gigabits per second. That is a big jump from older versions. Each of these satellites weighs around 1,900 kilograms. Only Starship can carry that much weight. So if Starship does not work properly, the whole internet system will be delayed. These new satellites also have faster modems and better tools for connecting with each other in space. This will make the Starlink system stronger and faster. However, users will still need a clear sky to get a good signal, and using the system in another country may add extra fees. SpaceX has asked the Federal Communications Commission for permission to launch nearly 30,000 of these new Starlink Version 3 satellites. This massive request highlights how central Starship is to making their global internet network a reality. Flight 10 will also test new heat shield tiles. These tiles protect the rocket during re-entry when it hits the atmosphere at very high speeds. In Flight 2, several tiles ripped off mid-flight, exposing bare steel and raising serious concerns about survival during re-entry. But in Flight 9, most of them stayed in place, showing improvement. Now SpaceX is adding a backup layer under each tile, so even if one tile breaks or falls off, the rocket will still be protected. They are also testing metal tiles again. These tiles were first used in Flight 4. 
Metal is strong and can handle more damage, but it does not block heat as well as ceramic. To fix this, SpaceX is trying something new, an active cooling system. This system uses liquid methane to cool down the metal during re-entry. Methane is the same fuel used by the rocket, so it makes sense to use it for cooling, too. It is better than water because it stays cold even in space and handles pressure better. This cooling method keeps the metal from overheating and melting during re-entry. In a past flight, the metal coating peeled off under extreme heat, exposing the steel underneath and causing damage. Now, with liquid methane cooling the metal directly, that kind of failure might be prevented. It's a big step forward in building rockets that can survive tough conditions and be reused more quickly and safely. After Flight 6, SpaceX discovered something surprising. Under extreme heat, the steel formed small crystals that made it stronger. This finding could help not just rockets, but other industries too. The mission will also include an important test, turning on a Raptor engine while in space. This shows whether the engine can reliably restart in zero gravity, a key step for future Moon or Mars landings. Flight 10 is expected to follow a similar trajectory as past missions. It will head to near orbit, deploy its payload, and then splash down in the Indian Ocean. But this flight is all about tackling the biggest problems from earlier attempts, fuel system leaks, engine malfunctions, and software or system level errors that disrupted previous missions. The biggest failure so far came from Ship 36. It exploded during a test on June 18, 2025. The cause was a broken nitrogen pressure vessel. That type of part has caused issues in earlier flights too. That is why Flight 10 is so important. It is designed to test the fixes. Booster 16 is also part of this test campaign. It successfully completed its engine test and is now nearing full readiness for launch. The flight termination system, which can safely destroy the rocket if it goes off course or has a major issue, has already been installed. Along with that, Booster 16 is equipped with grid fins for steering during descent and hot staging equipment that allows the upper stage to ignite while the booster is still attached, helping ensure a smoother, more efficient stage separation. There is one big question everyone is asking. Will SpaceX finally try to catch a booster with Mechazilla? The giant steel arms on the launch tower? This would be a game-changing move in rocket recovery. Rather than landing on legs like the Falcon 9, the booster would be caught mid-air, saving time, weight, and hardware. If this works, it could push Starship toward faster turnarounds and truly rapid reusability, something no rocket has ever done before. If everything goes well, Flight 10 could be the launch that proves Starship is almost ready for full service. It is the most complex and most important test so far. So what do you think? Can SpaceX pull it off? And if you found this breakdown helpful, make sure to subscribe. We bring daily updates on everything happening in space. Thanks for watching.